if your reasons for wanting to be a physician are not grounded in facts, <laughs> grounded in reality, medical schools aren't going to touch you. Application Renovation Season 4, Episode 9. How are you doing today? Doing good, thanks. <laughs> Not doing perfect or else we wouldn't have to be talking. Let's, let's talk about the application cycle. Give me the nuts and bolts. How many cycles is this for you? How many interviews have you been on? What's it looking like? So this is my third fully applied cycle. Technically, it's my fourth. Um, I started it uh, in 2020, I think, but I didn't apply in 2020 just because I didn't do well on my MCAT and I didn't think there was a point in doing it. So this is my third fully applied cycle. And, uh, to date, I haven't had any interviews, no interviews ever, any cycle. No. So third fully applied cycle. Let's, let's work through that. So this is 2021 to 2022. Mm -hmm. You applied 2020, 2021. I didn't apply. I just started the like the AMCAS application and okay. then kind of what I thought, you know what, this isn't worth it. I need to make some changes. So I didn't think it would be okay. worth the time to do it. So that wasn't your first application cycle. You have other application cycles before yes. then. Okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. what were the other ones? Uh, I So I think it was 2018 Roughly. I applied, 2019, and then 2020 I didn't, and then 2021 I did. Okay. So 2018, 2019, no luck interview-wise with those either? Correct. Okay. So self-assessment, self-reflection, what do you think is going on here? Uh, with the previous ones or with this one? Any of them. Okay. So the previous ones, I think it's really cut and dry. Um, poor MCAT, poor GPA, didn't just didn't have much to show. Very much out of my element. Um, just, I think I was really naive. Those first two cycles, it was kind of the idea of like, oh, I want to be a doctor. So like, you know, take me kind of thing, which of course <laughs> is not works in any way, shape or form. Um, so I really just had nothing to show really um, those first two cycles. Yeah. This last cycle, um, I think I made some major improvements. My MCAT went up significantly. Um, I got a master's where I did very well in a very difficult program. Um, I did a lot more volunteering. I did a lot of things that uh, were important to me. Uh, so I really feel like I changed it. The problem with this last one, I think was one, um, it was definitely a late application. And part of that was because I delayed my MCAT because I just felt I needed more time. And I thought, well, I'd rather take a little bit more time to get a good, you know, a good score than rush it in the hopes of, you know, getting it in as soon as possible. Okay. So I think that was a big hindrance. The second one was, um, well, I, like I've, since I applied, I've talked to some of the admissions committees. I've called them and said, hey, can you give me any feedback, et cetera. And some of them were really happy to give me some feedback. Kind of the number one thing was um, for one of them was just your undergrad GPA is low. And I know it is. It was absolutely trash for a long time. Yeah. Um, saying that is like your biggest hurdle. Now, the school that was for was an out of state school. And they said that, you know, that's kind of ex exacerbated because you're out of state. So we can only take 10%. And we've got 10% that have that higher GPA in the same MCAT. Yeah. So I think the GPA is really probably one of the biggest glaring details in it. Okay. Uh, just because my undergraduate, I just didn't know what the heck I was doing. I was really immature. Yeah. Uh, but then like, I, you know, I went to, did a post back kind of like kind of a DIY just to hit the fundamentals and then learn some more stuff, finish what I needed for my pre-med recs. Um, so I did pretty okay in those. But then when I went to grad school, I thought I really came into my own. And I think one thing that kind of is a shame about it is that, most of my classes were graduate, but a lot of them are actually cross-linked undergraduate, but I don't get any of the credit for those for my science GPA, like, or anything like that. Yeah. It only comes for my graduate. So I think that kind of hurts too, a little bit, but. Okay. All right. Well, you ready to dive in and <laughs> take a peek. All right. So, um, I, I don't think just, just off the bat stats in, in my mind are not your issue. I've, I've been trying really hard for application renovation to, to, have people on where we can't just go, oh, your stats are trash. That's why you didn't get in. Let's look at everything else. Okay, right? great. So stats are obviously, we're, we'll see them. They're not 
amazing, uh, especially the GPA, as you mentioned. Uh, but I don't think that's the biggest issue that you have going on. Okay. And we'll look at the rest and see see what's going on. Sounds sure. good? Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at your application. As you mentioned, uh, you applied a little bit late. That is uh, okay. July 21st, not horrible, not great. Uh, mm-hmm. It was processed a month later. So August 19th, Timeline wise, you're a couple weeks behind when admissions committees are starting to look at at applications and kind of getting the ball rolling for that next application cycle. So you're a little behind the eight ball, not going to kill you, not great, but it is what it is. And I think for you having this be your third application cycle where you're actually in it, um, it made sense, right? You, you, if the MCAT you thought was a big hindrance for your other applications, then it makes sense to delay the application a little bit, get your MCAT score back and go, okay, I'm ready to apply. I don't think as, as a lot of people do, especially for maybe a first application cycle, submit the application to one school, get verified, get processed, get the MCAT score back and then add more schools because this is your third application cycle. I think that's a, a, a very uh, prudent thing to to do there. Mm-hmm. So looking through the rest of your demographics, obviously most of it is redacted out, not a big deal. Um, no big red flags in our red flag section. SES disadvantage, no. Um, we keep going and we get to transcripts. Okay, so we get to transcripts. We see some high school dual enrollment, uh, starting off with some Bs. Uh, a couple post back classes here early on. It's, it's weird how they laid out just because of the college, um, right. uh, at least here on the, the printout. And then we get to grades and we go, okay, I got a C pretty early on. I got some C's and F in there. Psychology mm-hmm. of adulthood. You're like, I want to be a kid. You're like uh, Jeffrey from Toys R Us, right? I don't want to grow up. I'm a Toys R Us kid. You're like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Um, organic chemistry really, really bit you there. Yep. So we, we get through your grades just scrolling through, and it's like, okay, things don't look great. What's very interesting that I see here, and, and I have a question about it later on, is we see um, Birmingham Southern College. Now, I don't know where that is. I could assume it's Alabama, right? Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, We have Cisco College. No idea where that is. That's okay. Piedmont College. I've heard of it. Don't know where that is. Then -hmm. we have Georgia. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have McMurray. Don't know Mm -hmm. where that is. Uh, Texas Tech. So it's very interesting, the jumping around that you're doing and, and uh, I may have a question about that in a little bit. Uh, sure. And then finishing off here, graduate work at University of Denver. So now you're in Colorado, potentially, it looks like. Mm-hmm. So uh, all over. And then I, I love here the the schools actually tell you. So Texas, Alabama, Georgia, Texas, Colorado. So um, a little bit all over the place. Right. Obviously, a lot of students and parents are concerned of like, don't transfer schools, it looks bad, or don't transfer, you can't build a network. Transfer if you need to. That's not right. an issue. You may have to talk about why you're, you're transferring a lot and going to a bunch yeah. of different places. That's okay. All right. We get to undergraduate GPA. Yeah. And we see here from a science GPA perspective, uh, a 3-1 cumulative. So you're above that 3-0 mark which is great. So let's look at trends. Uh, your high school um, is no, no science classes there. Freshman, so first year, 2-7, only four credits, so it doesn't bite you too much. Um, sophomore year, 2-7, again, doesn't bite you too much. Junior year, 2-2-5, four credits, again, not terrible. And then senior year, you racked up 34 credits there, and at, at a 292. So that's where the bulk of your credits are coming from. And mm-hmm. then you did a post back, uh, and it was so so, right? 349, not stupendous. Right. But then you do it. have your graduate GPA. So you you have this upward trend uh, that, that you top off here with your graduate GPA at 3.8 science GPA, 25 credits. So potentially, there's some question of like, it's graduate, it's not It's not undergrad. How easy is graduate compared to undergrad? 
and it's only 25 credits. Could it be 35? Could it be 45? So that may be some potential question, some potential concern. But 3-8, 25 credits, that's pretty solid. So for me, for a school out there, you're probably good enough. Um, looking at total GPA, we have a uh, nice solid cumulative 357 um, uh, undergraduate or, or post back here and then 301. So just barely over that 30 mark for cumulative undergrad. Right. But you're over it. It's this mis- mythical like 3.0 mark. There's there's nothing magical about it. There's there's no like automatic. Oh, you got above a 3.0. Great. It's just this number that we throw out going. It may be easy for some schools to filter you based on less than a 3.0 or above a 3.0. That's all it is. Okay. MCAT score. So here are your your first application cycle 498 second. Second application cycle looks like 500. Third application cycle back down to a 499. And then this, um, or third application cycle that you didn't apply. Uh, and then third application cycle, this cycle, when you did apply, you got that 511, crushed it, went up 12 points from your previous score. So great job there. What do you think clicked with you for that last MCAT score? The two biggest things was what were one being in grad school was incredibly helpful because as I was kind of talking about earlier, a lot of our classes were cross-linked for undergraduate. So I was taking advanced molecular biology, um, several biochemistries, a bunch of different courses that really kind of solidified a weaker foundation I had. Um, so I got a great understanding of the processes I needed to um, from graduate school. But the second thing that really helped was uh, I did two big things. I used UWorld and then I used Altius and I just practiced constantly. The first three times I took the MCAT, I would like read my Kaplan books or something and like, okay, I'll try to understand it. And I just never, like, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, I read it. So why can't I understand it? It's because I wasn't practicing it. Yep. Um, when I did my last one, I think I studied for like five months or so. Um, it was in the spring and I was just studying constantly. I went through all of the U world. Um, and then three months, I think leading up to my actual MCAT, I was taking my Altius tests like one a month going through it. And then the last like two months, I had enough to do one every weekend. I was at the school doing a test every single weekend. And I, I think that really solidified it. Yeah. So moral of the story, content review Focusing on that too much is just a huge mistake that so many students make. Right. So you got into the questions, the QBanks, you world doing practice exams. Perfect. Right. Uh, that's what the MCAT's about. All right, let's keep rolling into the activity section. And we'll start to see uh, if you've watched a lot of application renovation videos before, either you or whoever's watching now. It's, it's, for me, it's all about the story that you're telling. And uh, what is your goal with the activity descriptions? What is your goal with the personal statement? And were you able to connect with the reader? And my answer for you is probably not. So oh, let's okay. let's jump in. So this first one here, paid employment, medical, clinical. Uh, this, this is something that started uh, right before you applied. So probably not a ton to talk about here because it's relatively new position. 2,200 uh, hours, so full-time job, basically. You listed it as medical clinical, peds, infectious disease. And then you kind of just talk about job duties here. And none okay. of the job duties are clinical job duties. It's all research kind of lab work. Right. So right off the bat, the first one that I see here, I'm like, well, that's not clinical experience. So I'm going to cross that one out. Not clinical right. experience. I'm going to list that as just paid employment, not medical clinical. Okay. Okay. And then not super impactful from a, a description because you're just talking about things that you're doing. Okay. Right? At the end of the day, I think the activity descriptions are your opportunity to show who you are in each of these positions. Okay. Not your skills, not your strengths, not how amazing you are, not how each activity is it is pointed to you being a better doctor. Just who are you in each of these positions? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So first one, we're going to cross off. 
<laughs> Second one, capstone presentation. So this is for your, your masters, I'm assuming. Uh, just something I noted uh, on this first one here, or this, this next one, and then it's in subsequent ones, is your spacing. You have some weird spaces at the beginning of your descriptions uh, okay. that you're, you're just wasting characters. So for everyone, you don't need to indent. Like this is not formal paragraphs. This is nothing like, and, and you didn't even indent like uniformly. The right, yeah. description right. looks like maybe it has a tab or five spaces. The most meaningful looks like it has a space at the beginning. So it's just sloppy okay. reading it like this. The the schools don't see exactly this, the, the PDF of this, whatever software they're using to import all of the data, however they're viewing it. Maybe they see that, maybe they don't. So not a huge deal, but just a waste of characters and, and sure. just looks a little bit sloppy. So don't indent. Don't indent. Correct. Okay. Don't need Great. to do that. So you have this uh, this device that you created. Sounds really cool. This uh, replacement disc, which is great. I have a herniated cervical disc that causes lots of problems. Uh, so maybe I'll need this in the future. Patent it. See if you can get me a deal in the future. Um, <laughs> you did what's very, just very, very common for students to do. I highlighted it here. In your most meaningful essay, you said, personally... I feel it showed my willingness to take on challenges and expand my academic pursuits. This was done while shadowing, volunteering, and studying for both my graduate program and MCAT. You're selling yourself. Like, look how amazing I am. I right. just, I love academics. I love learning. I love science. I love it all. And I can do it while doing all this other stuff. And right. usually the part that isn't said is implied and I know that being a medical student will involve lots of learning and lots of other things. And so I'm just letting you know, I'm ready to be a medical student. Mm -hmm. right? right. I want to know who you are. Okay. I don't want to know that you think you're ready for medical school, which is what this okay. is saying. Okay. Okay. Or what sure. I think it's saying. How do you like phrase something like that then? Like phrase just, what? Like to describe that like an experience you just describe it then it's not um... you talk about it tell me a story from it like okay. the tell sure. me the time where you you, you realize like the first time that it that it actually worked right you oh, take okay. the, you take the the thing off of the 3d printer and you're like oh my gosh this is this is what i wanted after 20 failed attempts right uh, yeah. what did that look like what did that feel like help okay. me the reader be in your shoes to experience what you're experiencing okay great Awesome. We get to uh, hospice. Next one. Uh, it looks like over the course of a year, you have January 2022 or 21 to January 2022, only 25 hours. Right. So big question mark right off the bat is, well, were you really doing anything? It's only 25 hours. Right. over the course of a year and you're marking it as a most meaningful. So right. red flags go up immediately. Okay. Like okay. why? Again, a lot of students try to force in an agenda to these, uh, to their application. And so they go, okay, I know that to, to be a doctor, you need medical and clinical experience. And so I'm going to part mark this as a most meaningful experience, even though it really is only 25 hours. And so it's really not that meaningful, but I'm just going to make something up because whatever. Mm. Right. Okay. And, and so you feel forced to do that when okay. it probably is not your truth, but you're, you think it has to be. Okay. 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 Most meaningful for AMCAS, for TMDSAS, is most meaningful to you as a person, not most meaningful to you in medicine. Okay. Okay. And okay. put an asterisk on that. I, I, I always forget just the exact prompt on TMDSAS, uh, if they're specifically asking medicine or not. Uh, AMCAS, without a doubt, it's not most meaningful for medicine. It's just most meaningful to you as a person. No, oh, okay. All right. So the story itself, uh, the, the most meaningful description, it's okay. 
it could have been better with just one story. You kind of jumped around of this person and that person and this person. Could have been better, again, putting yourself or helping me, the reader, be in your shoes for one mm -hmm. interaction. I always oh. find those as a reader to be much more impactful than just, I'm going to tell you a quick little thing over here without much impact or resolution because I need to have another story over here without much impact and resolution because I need another story over here without much impact and resolution. One okay. story, lots of impact, uh, lots of uh, resolution, reflection, etc. Okay. Let me get to, uh, so, so hospice, you have clinical experience. Great. Got it. Not a lot, 25 hours. Um, and you stopped it January, 2022, which is interesting. Um, and and I'll, I'll put a little pin in that to, to okay. see what's going on there. Sure. Um, harm reduction action center. You, again, you have this listed as medical clinical, um, 45 hours across five months or so. So again, not a lot of hours. You have here a gateway to emergency health, human services for drug users. Okay, great. Um, uh, you have this outreach program. And then for most meaningful experience remarks, you get again into the sales pitch. Okay. Reinforce my belief that everyone deserves empathy. Okay. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit, pull some information in that, that the viewers don't know is that your story, your theme that you have throughout your application is there are too many people, especially drug users for this specific example here, who don't get the care that they need because they're not cared for. Okay. And I, as a human, want to care for them and I'm going to shove that in your face every chance I get. Okay. That, that I love all humans, no matter who they are, no matter what they're going through. Okay. Okay. That's okay. your theme throughout your application. Okay. That's your justification for being a physician. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> and I'll, I'll fast forward. I'll tell you right now. Right. You don't have to be a physician to care for addicts those going through through troubled times, people with mental health disorders who are, are really down on their luck, those who are experiencing homelessness, L lots of lots of people out there who need lots of help. You don't need to be a physician to help them. And I okay. would probably say you would have a bigger impact in their life not being a physician. Right. So that's your your theme. And then we're going to get into this, this uh, next highlighted part here. So sure. everyone deserves empathy, dot, dot, dot. They told me they would avoid going to hospitals because the staff treated them apathetically. I believe everyone should be treated with empathy. Those doctors over there, nurses, PAs, whoever, obviously don't think that. Therefore, I should be a doctor to okay. show them how to do it. Mm -hmm. That's basically the, the, your argument in your, your whole personal statement, your whole application. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Well, it, it wasn't intentional. Oh, of um, course, it, of course it's not I, intentional, but it was intentional. And, okay. and, and I, I'll tell you um, that it's, it's not intentional because it's who you are, mm -hmm. but it's intentional because you spent however many months crafting your application. Mm -hmm. And that's that's the story that you put forward. So it's okay. intentional. Okay? okay. Sure. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> so uh, again, the 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 whole story here, not considered human by the doctors, actively avoiding treatment, judged by providers. This is your whole story right here. Okay. So I will tell everyone, avoid negativity. Okay. You are you are being negative to the other physicians. But you right. have one, one side of the story. So okay. you can still talk about the impact that you want to have on these types of patients without pointing fingers at, at the other physicians and providers. Okay, 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 awesome. All right, moving on. So we have uh, physician shadowing, clinical observation uh, from 
December 2020 to May 2021. 50 hours sounds great. Uh, in your dates, you have it 12 2020 to 5 2021. And then in the text description, you say December 2020 to June 2021. So your your dates are off. Right. And there's no reason to repeat the date information because it's already in the data that you provided. Right. Okay, so very common just waste of space, waste of characters that students do. And then your shadowing experience, description-wise, you basically spent talking about this cervical disc replacement that you've already talked about. Mm -hmm. So what was the point of this description when you already talked about everything uh, right. above? So not super impactful because of that reason, but it's good yep. to see some shadowing here uh, on your list. So moving on, we have community service medical clinical, and you call it the COVID spit lab, where you're collecting mm -hmm. data for an ongoing project. And I, I put a question mark here. Is this really clinical experience? Is it not? Are you, it looks like you're collecting saliva samples from students, but were they, were they patients or was it just like, hey, we just want data, come spit in a tube? Um, or were they coming to you with symptoms and you're talking to them I'm like, tell me about your symptoms and this and that. So maybe it's clinical, maybe it's not, uh, but I uh, got 31 hours there doing that. And then the next one here, again, you listed it medical clinical, right. your UT Southwestern, and it's all research lab stuff. So again, not medical clinical, 2000 hours here, full-time job uh, from 2020 to 2021. You list it as Dallas, but you have other experiences during the same time that are other states and cities and stuff. And so I'm very confused. And that's why I was kind of pointing it out earlier, kind of foreshadowing all of the bouncing around of different places. Mm -hmm. Like, was this a remote position? Like, how did this work? I was, I was, I was full-time employed at uh, UT Southwestern um, at the time. I was doing online courses at Texas Tech. Um, okay. But, uh, but you have here 520. Uh -huh. to 721 for UT Southwestern mm -hmm. in Dallas. Mm -hmm. You also have here 1120 to 521. So smack dab in the middle in Denver doing the COVID spit lab. So either you oh. dated things wrong. Yeah, I did. I dated that wrong. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's very sloppy. Yeah, sloppy. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Oh. That, that kind of stuff just can't happen on an application. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And, and super nitpicky, right? No, super, it's... super nitpicky for me. Somebody else may not look at that or catch it or question it, but hey, that's why, that's why you're paying me the big bucks. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. Um, just, just clarification. Nobody's paying me to be on this show. <laughs> um, uh, all right. So... Again, not medical clinical. So we get to the end here, just scrolling through the rest of your activities. No other clinical experiences at the bottom. So the one, two-ish maybe, the spit lab, let's call it clinical, not super great clinical, you're just collecting spit. Um, it's really the the time at the harm reduction action center potentially as as clinical experience only 45 hours uh that you stopped in june of 2021 right. so it's like okay january to june 2021 check 45 hours got got my time okay uh and then the hospice again mm -hmm. for a year only 25 hours right so clinical experience very big gaping hole. Right. Okay. And I'm going to point out in one second why it's an even bigger issue for you. Okay. So can you guess before we jump in why it's a bigger issue for you specifically? Uh, I don't know. I feel like maybe because I talked about clinical stuff or like my ideas of it without having the like enough hours and background to back it up. 
Well, that's, that's, that's always the problem with clinical experience, a lack of clinical experience. But specifically for you, if we scroll down to your other physician shadowing experience, tons of hours here in 2015, 40 mm -hmm. hours a week times four months. For a lot of people, that's a red flag. It sounds very strange to say that, but 40 hours a week for four months of shadowing, that's too much. Oh, okay. It was during the summers in yeah. school. And so I thought, well, I had an opportunity and I thought that that's something I should have done. Was it during the summers or during one summer? Uh, it was during one summer from yeah. yeah May to August. Correct. So the reason I say it's too much, which is weird to say, is because right. shadowing is super boring. Yeah, absolutely. And so it's like, there, there's a question of judgment of like, why were you going for 40 hours a week for four months just trailing a doctor around? Right. Maybe 40 hours for one week, two weeks, a month. Right. And then go get some clinical experience because that's what you really need. Right. Right. So there's a, a question of judgment of like, why did you do that so much? But the bigger issue, again, specifically for you, is something that I caught in your description here that I brought up earlier to you before we hit record is, although I shadowed my father, an eye surgeon on several occasions, my shadowing with Dr. Blah, 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 piqued my interest in ortho. Daddy's a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was retired. That... Doesn't matter, he's retired. <laughs> Daddy's a doctor, right? Uh -huh. That's the only place in your application, other than uh, I'm assuming, uh, which we have redacted out, that you have uh, kind of parents and, and doctor and whatever there. Mm -hmm. That's the only place in your application where you talk about dad. Okay. Yes? Yes, yes, I believe okay. so, yeah. Kind of hidden. I barely picked up on it last night because I was doing it super late at night reading these uh, and marking it up. That is a bigger red flag for you having less clinical experience. Okay. So I look at this and I go, okay, daddy's a doctor. Have you done your homework to see if you want to be a physician for yourself and not because daddy's a doctor? Right. And with about 70 hours of clinical experience, not great clinical experience, the answer is no. Okay. Okay. So Absolutely. right off the bat, I don't even need to see your personal statement. I would push this one aside going, you're not ready. Okay. Okay. I don't care what your stats are. I don't care about anything else. You're not ready. Okay. And, and these next few episodes for people watching are going to be very similar stories. No matter what your stats are, if you don't have the experience to back up your reasons for wanting to be a physician, if your reasons for wanting to be a physician are not grounded in facts, <laughs> grounded in reality, medical schools aren't going to touch you. I have a student in a couple episodes, 4.0 GPA, 528 MCAT score. Didn't get into medical school. Intercollegiate athletics, I just want to touch on this one experience. Very, very common for students to take what could be super fun, talking about swimming and diving and talking about that as a great experience. You're like, ooh, being a doctor, teamwork. Let me focus on being a team player. All right, again, sales pitch. Right. Uh, and be careful with uh, military time. <laughs> Not a lot of people know military time or use military time. I looked at it, I'm like 1,600 to 1,800. I'm like, oh, he's talking about time. Right, right, right. Gotcha, yeah. Yeah, stay, stay away from, that's very jargony, although okay. uh, uh, I would avoid it. So again, okay. I learned the value of physical discipline, the benefits of a regimented schedule. Again, just like, hey guys, I'm ready to be a doctor. I know right. the value of discipline. Right. <laughs> no no uh, correlation there. So moving into the personal statement, the thing that I love to tear apart um, and talk about. So right off the bat, I, I, I know what you're doing. I wrote here, service theme. You have a service theme. I mm -hmm. wanted to be a doctor because I believe in service. Okay. 
let's rewind and look at your activities. I always mm -hmm. talk about this. If you're going to say something in your application, back it up with your activities. So we go to your activities, okay? Paid employment, medical, clinical, not service related. Capstone, presentation, not service related. Hospice, service related, right? Volunteer position, 25 hours over the course of a year, not great. Mm -hmm. Another community service volunteer, again, the Harm Reduction Action Center, 45 hours, great. Uh, not a ton. Physician shadowing, uh, COVID spit lab, I wouldn't necessarily say is service related. Paid employment, UT Southwestern, not service related. ACU, undergraduate research festival, not service related. Extracurricular act activities, not service related. Honor roll, not service related. Research lab at McMurray, not service related. Physician shadowing, not service related. Swim dive, not service related. Abilene Pipers, mm, maybe service related mm -hmm. in, a, in a little bit of a different way. So yeah. I go back through your activities going, you don't have a lot of service stuff here. Right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, given my finite existence, it is my obligation and duty to spend this time dedicated to improving the world around me. All right. So very service oriented, giving oriented thing. You haven't done a ton. Right. But you're setting up a, an argument, right? Mm -hmm. This is the argumentative type personal statement. I'm okay. going to give you my thesis. My thesis is I need to help the world around me. And I'm going to explain why medicine is the way that I'm going to do that. Okay. Okay. I don't think you should set up personal, personal opinion. Uh, right. uh, the, the personal statement is not an argumentative paper. Okay. Right. It's a paper to tell me your story about how you got here. Okay. Which starts with dad as a doctor that mm -hmm. you just completely neglected. <laughs> you slid in one sentence in, in a different shadowing experience um, and, and you don't mention them anywhere else. So right off the bat, we have this service theme, setting up this argument. You jump into extracurricular activities, listing some extracurricular activities, again, potentially supporting that argument of, look, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm out there supporting people, right? Mm -hmm. You have the most important thing we have to offer is empathy and compassion, right? You've talked about this in other places. You don't need to repeat yourself. Okay. Uh, individuals have told me time and again that they are not considered people by others, bringing back that negative theme that you've already talked about, just rehashing it here. So for me, that just goes to lazy writing. Oh, okay. You got nothing new to say in your personal statement. You've already talked about it in your extracurricular activities. Like that's, that's, that's not a good thing. Okay. okay. So don't repeat stuff in personal statements uh, that you do in your activity section. Okay. Whenever we go out, I spend the day wishing that I could give them the medical care beyond first aid. Why? Why do you think that? Why do you? Why do you want that? Okay. Uh, why not? Uh, you don't. You don't need to answer. You don't need to answer. I'm just. It's a rhetorical question, right? That that's the question I want answered in the personal statement. Right. Right. You just make the statement. Therefore. Your next sentence, I want to pursue medicine so that I can offer them more than supplies in our packs, which is basically saying the same thing. You just reworded the sentence. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. I wanted to reason and you're just like, I want to be a doctor because I want to be a doctor. <laughs> that's, what, right. that's what you said there. Okay. And then, and I, I may catch some flack for this, but I read through this. Medicine should be for everyone, including those who must trade sex for drugs Interesting uh, uh, kind of example there for a place to sleep, um, uh, for drugs or for a place to sleep. Uh, shooting up with dirty needles, watching friends die, being sh people shoved into a gutter. It's a lot of trauma porn. Mm. Other people's trauma. Mm -hmm. And it's just a weird thing to focus on, I think, for a personal mm -hmm. statement. It questions your motivations. For me, it's this weird, like, I, I, I don't know. It's just weird that you're focusing on on so much uh, trauma in other people's lives that mm -hmm. you only have, going back to the, the harm reduction activity, 
45 yeah. hours over five months, and it's such a big part of your life that I, I don't know if it's it's just like it, it, it gets to some emotions. You're trying to elicit this response from people, and so you're going for like the biggest, dirtiest, like grossest, whatever kind of examples to mm-hmm. talk about. Mm-hmm. But it's it just it's just weird, I think. Okay. 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 So um, you have here aspiring physicians can learn a lot about caring for others from them. So again, going back to this, everyone out there who's practicing just doesn't right. understand all of these underserved patient populations like I do because I spent 45 hours with them. Right. Right. And so that that's where I kind of get to this. You're you're like using their trauma to go, look at me, look at how amazing I am. I understand you. Okay. It's just weird. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm gonna get to a red flag statement. Um just what I call uh, in a personal statement, not that it's a red flag that you talked about it, but you're talking about your red flag of your grades. Uh, it's a lot. I typically like to think of a red flag statement to be like a sentence or two or three, not a big full paragraph. Um, and so you, you say here, only after three years of school and my own struggles with mental illness, and I'm like, oh, like just just throwing that in there. <laughs> like, hey, what? here you go. Um, so be careful with just throwing stuff out there that okay. may be considered a red flag without any sort of explanation, without any sort of resolution, like what's going on, mm-hmm. right? And obviously you're a human being. You're allowed to have mental illness. We all are. D- did you need to throw that in there? Are you using it to support your decision to pursue medicine is your treatment and the experience that you had going through that a big part of why you want to be a doctor? If it is, great. Let's talk about it. Right. But you need to expand on it other than just throwing it out there going, hey, I, I struggled with mental illness. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we, we get through that. You don't need to talk about GPA and all this stuff, right? Your transcripts are there. Okay. But you can talk about why you struggled, but you don't have to get into super specifics. Like I went from a 2.0 GPA to a 3.6 GPA to a this GPA, whatever, right? You don't need to, mm-hmm. to get into a lot of that. Uh, moving on, next paragraph, lots of uh, more timeline stuff, extracurricular stuff that just isn't necessary. Okay. Um, and we get to conclusion. I, I love conclusions. Conclusions are like, I, I want to just feel like, inspired by what you want to go do and you finish with this teddy roosevelt quote (laughs) well what was the goal of the quote here um it's just something that meant a lot to me i think because um i think because i've made so many mistakes like throughout this process but i didn't give up each time and i wanted to keep um trying and just keep going even if it meant failing every single time but just meant that to me really don't use quotes. <laughs> just, this is your personal statement. Just okay. general broad advice for everyone. And sure, people ignore me and that's okay. I, I just, especially in a conclusion when you're supposed to be wrapping it up, very aspirational. This is who I am. This is what I want to accomplish. Here's Teddy Roosevelt's words. Right. Right. right yeah. And words yeah. about failure. You you finish kind of with your tail between your legs. Okay. Of like, I've failed a bunch. Mm -hmm. And this, I humbly ask for your consideration for placement in your class. Huge, huge, huge mistake for a personal statement. Okay. This personal statement is going out to every school that you apply to. Right. So you're like, I ask for your acceptance and your acceptance and your acceptance and your acceptance. Right? It's just weird. You're talking to one person, but you're talking to every school that you applied to. Right. Absolutely. So for everyone, leave out very specific kind of language like that. Okay. So it gets to the end of your personal statement. And the only thing that I think I understand about you wanting to be a physician is that you have a passion for kind of the, the underserved population, an indigent population, addicts and those experiencing homelessness and those experiencing mental illness and drug addiction and, and stuff like that. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's really the only thing I can lean on to go, okay, this is why you want to do it. But I go back to your activity section and I see 45 hours across five months. So it's really right. not that big, a big part of your life. Mm -hmm. So I get to the end and I go, not a lot of clinical experience. Dad's a doctor, not a clear reason on what's going on in your activity section, uh, in, in your personal statement. I, I don't know if you know why you want to be a doctor. Okay. And medical schools won't touch students like that. Okay. Okay. Your story about why you're doing this has to be clear enough, right? It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be clear enough. Okay. And I don't think yours is clear enough. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> okay. So just to, to go through, because students love looking at school lists, your school list is pretty bad too. Okay. okay? So we look at um, the biggest thing that I like to look at. I don't look at, oh, that's a top tier, low tier. I don't believe in tiers of medical schools. I don't go back to your stats and go, oh, you shouldn't apply there. That, that Those are out of your stats. Like, I don't look at any of that. I look at state school public mm -hmm. school or private school. Mm -hmm. If it's a state school, are you in state there? Do you have ties to that state? What is their out of state acceptance like? And did you know that math before applying? Mm -hmm. My assumption is based on all of the, the public schools that you apply to, you probably didn't look at that. You probably, I'm assuming, just said, well, uh, looking here, Louisiana State, eh, it's kind of near Alabama, I'll go there. Right, I'll, I'll apply there. Uh, okay. Medical College of Georgia. I lived in Georgia. Sure, I'll apply there. Right, I went to UGA. Alabama. I I went to school there in Alabama. I'll apply there. Uh, Arkansas, close enough to Alabama. I'll apply there. Right. So lots and lots and lots of public out of state schools, right? Where you have a very low chance of getting in for most of them. Right. Okay. And to, so those are lots of wasted schools. Okay. And it's interesting that most of these schools you didn't apply to previously. I don't know if that was a strategic decision of like, I don't want to apply to schools that have seen my application before mm. or not. Mm. So we get to the end. I just want to take a peek at your secondary essay uh, because mm. I think it's really important to see your Medical College of Georgia secondary essay. Please discuss your primary interest in attending the Medical College of Georgia. And basically, your whole answer is all about Georgia, not about the medical school. Right. Okay. Yeah. When you answer the questions, they have to be specifically, why, are you, why do you want to come to this school? It needs to be about the school. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So they want to feel loved and, and, and wanted and right, attractive and whatever. Uh, and, and you're like, well... You're just, you're in a place that I kind of like. So I guess I'll go to, to your school. <laughs> <laughs> so we get to the end. I told you at the beginning, I don't think stats were a huge issue for you. They're, mm. they're not the best, but you've done a lot of repair. Your MCAT score, obviously super solid. I think you need clinical experience. Right. And, and I just think you need more help or better help telling your story. Yeah, absolutely. Questions. I, so I guess I just kind of struggle with when we do like the activity descriptions and everything. Uh, I feel like we've been kind of like told, like, or maybe not told, but we feel like you need to kind of explain it as like why it's relevant for medical school. Um, says, who? I guess, I guess, says who? I don't know. I guess like the, you know, the dumb internet boards that we've all <laughs> been you know, best about. So I, I, I have a book called The Pre Med Playbook Guide to the Medical School Application. Awesome. <laughs> Lots of examples on how to write. In my opinion, how to write activity descriptions. Okay, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think that's something I struggled with is because like uh, any activity I did that was important to me, um, I just felt like maybe I was like trying to like frame it in a medical sense and so I just talk about just like why I enjoyed it. And I think that was something I definitely have struggled with. Um, and I, yeah, I guess, like I said, it's just because we, I feel like oh, I have to make this frame this in like a medical perspective instead of, I like doing this. And I think that was a huge issue I've had. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Um, so I guess another big question. So um, 
I now, so what I think I now have a lot more clinical experience because I work at, as a clinical trial manager, um, at a clinic in Colorado. Um, and part of my job, I consent patients. Um, I work with them. I go through their procedures with them. I don't do anything medical with them, obviously, but I read them. I help them get through all their consent forms and everything. So I don't know, is that stuff that is definitely more clinical than like the other stuff I've had before, or is it still just kind of teetering? It, it depends on what you're doing. If it's, if it's just going through consent forms, I would consider mm-hmm. that admin work. If okay. it's like a clinical research coordinator where you're kind of going um, from like appointment to appointment with the, the patients and calling them after a procedure or yeah. something saying, how's everything going? What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. It, it depends. If it's just consent work, no. If it's more than that, then then yes. Yeah, it's definitely a lot more than that. It's There's a lot that we have to do with it. So that, that's good to know. Okay. Um, and then I guess my other question is, you know, trying to like move forward. I've been thinking of like what I need to do to improve. One is obviously clinical. Um, and I think a big thing is I've been wanting to get more like hands-on experience because I just don't feel like I have enough of that to justify like, yeah, I want to go, like after you we were saying, like I want to go to medical school, but I just don't feel like I have like, the background enough to say, here's why. And so part of me has been like, you know what, I have an opportunity to go to get EMT certified here in uh, where I live. And I really think I'd really like to do that because then I can volunteer and actually get more hands-on work doing yeah. that to be able to be say, yes, I really am interested in doing this. Um, so that's kind of like what I've been thinking of doing is I'm going to do that. Um, and potentially like another thing, is I've been really struggling with this idea of should I go back to school to do a little bit more work? Um, because some of the schools I talked to said, you know, a lot of your stuff was good, da, 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 but your GPA, your undergrad GPA, it, we just need it higher. And so I've been debating like, well, should I go back to school for like a year to boost it up to like a 3.2, you know, I've kind of done the math on that. And I'm just struggling, like, is that worth it to do that? O- only you can answer that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think grades are your biggest issue. Okay. Yeah, does absolutely. does a better trend help, right? You, you have enough credits where it's going to take you a long time probably to get to a 3.2. Right. But if you add another 24, 30 credits over the course of a year at as close to a 4.0 as possible, will that tip the needle for schools? Potentially. Yeah. All right. It's, it's not the final number. It's what that trend looks like. Right. Potentially. And... Right you need some better clinical experience and, and better reflection on why you're doing this throughout yeah. your application. I agree. I, I think I had trouble too with it. Like, um, like hearing it back. I'm like, Oh, there's so many things like I just made huge mistakes with. And I guess I had trouble like expressing a lot of like why I want to do so. Like there's some stuff I didn't mention like about my dad who's a physician and stuff that looking back, I think I really should have talked about more because I have some good experiences with that. But it was one of those things like that wasn't why I wanted to go to medical school in the first place. I like I didn't want to go until my junior year. Yep. And, and it really, it came down to like personal issues and stuff. And I was like, well, you know, so I just I guess I had trouble a lot with framing how to do that. Um, well, I, I I don't think the the I love picking apart word choice. I don't think you had trouble doing it. I think you assumed the application should be one thing. Mm. When I'm telling you it's something else, right? You're trying to force this narrative of I understand what medicine is. I I'm ready to be a doctor. I can work hard and I'm diligent. Right? All these kind of buzzwords that are throughout your descriptions and stuff. That's what you thought you're you're supposed to do, right? right. Going back to oh the 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 internet boards say that you're supposed to do this, right? And I'm telling you, you just need to be yourself. And show yeah. who you are, show what you've done. And and it's just, it's such a different way of approaching it. And Absolutely. and at the end of reading an application like that, I can connect with you as a human being and not as, oh, this is another student who thinks they're hardworking enough to be a doctor. Right, right. I, I Yeah, I think it's hard to like figure out like how to write that. Um, I guess it seems, so it seems more just like, rather than, yeah, like I said, talking like why, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if only someone wrote a book about it or has three plus seasons of a YouTube series yeah. that where, where we go through and talk about this kind of stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, it's a big learning process. Uh, so, 
Well, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully you have learned enough. Yeah, absolutely. That Thank you. Only one more application cycle is needed. Yeah, I had intended to like do it for this next one, but I thought I'm going to wait until I have like, especially if I do get into my EMT certification, to have that kind of more hands-on experience to be able to talk more about things like that, like yeah, you know, and just kind of get some more experience like that uh, before I apply again. Yep. Yeah. I think that would help. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck. Thank you so much. I appreciate you taking the time.